In this video, we're going to introduce two new topics, bus signals and multiplexers. A bus signal is a signal that has multiple bits, or multiple wires associated with it. All the signals that we have looked at until now have been single wires that can either have a value of high or low. However, we can associate multiple wires with a signal. This is called a bus. And then we can use it to represent things like numerical values. In this example, we can see that our output port A is a wire, while our output port B is a bus with four wires associated with it. When declaring a bus, we put the length of the bus in square brackets after it. Here we are stating that B is a bus with four wires, three down to zero. Essentially, this means that output port B is made up of the following wires. We are going to use these bus signals to build a multiplexer. A multiplexer is an incredibly common hardware unit that has multiple inputs on, on one side and a single output on the other. It also has another special input called select. The select input is used to determine which of the inputs on the left hand side pass through to the single output on the right. In this case we have two inputs A and B on the left. Each of these is an 8-bit number. We also have Q, our output, which is also an 8-bit number. Since we have only two inputs, we can have a select input that is just a single wire. When select is low, output Q is assigned the input A. When select is high, output Q is assigned the input B. Let's code this up in system Verilog. In our current example directory, we have a module, busmux, which we will use to describe the circuit we just saw. Let's start with our inputs, A and B. In the ports list, we write input logic, then we specify the size of our bus. In our case, we want an 8-bit input, so we can write open square bracket 7 colon 0 close square bracket. Then we can write the name of our input bus, A. We now have an 8-bit bus input A. Let's do the same thing for B. Now let's add an output in the same way, just changing input to output. And we need our select signal. Now that we have our ports specified, let's add some logic to do the muxing. If the select input is low, we want to assign Q the input A, otherwise we want to assign it the input B. We can do this with what is known as a conditional assignment. So let's write this conditional assignment. Start by writing assign Q equals select question mark B colon A. What this is saying is that if the select is high, then we assign Q B, otherwise we assign it A. And that's it, that's our two input mux. Let's simulate this by typing make in our exercise directory, and then we can examine it by opening up the waveform, like we did in the other lessons. We can see that our inputs are being changed by the test bench, and that our select input is also being toggled. Let's make this a bit easier to read by telling GTK Wave how to interpret the bus signals. We can do this by right-clicking on a bus, go down to Radix, and then Decimal to display the bus as a decimal number. We can see that the logic is correct. Depending on the value of select, a different input is routed to the output. Great! It's also worth mentioning that we can expand the bus in GTK Wave to see the individual wires. Just double-click on it. Anyhow, that concludes this lesson where we learned about bus signals and multiplexers. Don't forget to give the exercise a try. 